The Surface Book is Microsoft's most powerful portable device. A versatile laptop, powerful tablet, and portable studio all in one with a beautiful magnesium finish for show and the powerhouse processing to go. Hello everyone and welcome to my review of the Microsoft Surface Book computer. I have a couple notes before we get started. One is that I've been primarily using this device as an engineering student for the past two years academically, as well as for personal use. Microsoft did provide me with this computer, but I will not be receiving any compensation whatsoever for this review. The reason I'm making this video is because I believe personally that most reviews out there don't quite capture the perspective of a student quite well enough. So I wanna make this video to give uh, some help to some students out there who are just entering college or continuing through and need to update their device. I wanna give them a good idea of what, what they can expect to see provided they decide to invest in the Surface Book. Let's get started. My device configuration is a Surface Book with performance base, 512 gigabytes of storage, 16 gigabytes of RAM, sixth generation Intel Core i7 processor. It comes with a 13 inch touch display, an Nvidia GeForce GTX 965M in the performance base and Surface Pen included in the box. Okay, now let me paint a picture for you. As a student studying engineering, my days were long and stressful as you can expect while studying engineering in addition to having multiple jobs and being involved in multiple student organizations. I'm not gonna dive into much of that in this video, but you can imagine that someone with a hectic schedule like mine needs a device that can keep up with everything. First up, the dimensions and durability. The Surface Book is 12.3 by 9.14 square inches with a varying thickness between just over half an inch up to 0.9 inches. It's a very standard laptop and I'd be surprised for it to not fit in most backpacks. Constructed from machined magnesium, the Surface Book comes in at 3.63 pounds. Now, I'm a beefier guy, so it feels like almost nothing, especially after coming off of a 5.5 pound Lenovo. It's about a pound heavier than the Surface Laptop 2 and MacBook Air and even the 2018 MacBook Pro. Should you be upgrading from a lighter device or no device at all, you can expect to feel this heft. However, keep in mind that the Surface Book indeed has the potential to replace all of your notebooks and papers, so there is a trade-off to consider. I'll get more into that later. I personally chose to use a 13-inch laptop sleeve for my device when transporting it in my backpack. It's a beautiful device, but it is prone to dings and dents like a car or phone. When you have this laptop, you will want to protect it. I recommend a laptop sleeve, case, or skin to help with that. You'll notice there's a gap between the base and screen as you approach the spine. Placing too much force can compress the device so you do not want to habitually place weighted objects on it or lay down on it. And no matter how bad your test went, do not throw it down on the desk or the bed at the end of the day, or you will regret it. There are rubber stops on the underside of the device, which is as good as the cushioning is going to get on the Surface Book. It will not slide off a table or your lap unexpectedly thanks to that. But again, you do need to handle this laptop carefully. I've seen Surface Books with cracked glass because of its impact with the metal base when closing. This device is certainly premium, but you need to treat and care for it like the premium device that it is. As I mentioned earlier, I was a fairly busy student with no shortage of tasks to handle during the day. So let's talk about battery life. Rated for 16 hours of video playback, the Surface Book remarkably handles the test of time, at least on a day-by-day -day basis. I can confidently say I was perfectly comfortable using the device as much as six to eight hours a day with energy to spare. After the average day of web browsing, word processing, taking notes, or light media indulgence like YouTube or Spotify. For this reason, I would intentionally leave my charger behind. Your mileage will vary. I personally don't game on the Surface Book, but I have used more intensive software in and out of the classroom for coding, game and app development, 3D simulations, and video editing. It's at these times in combination with an expected long day that I would bring my charger with me. Pound for pound, battery life is phenomenal and can handle the daily load for most students out there. If you're the type of person to bring their charger for safety, feel free as it doesn't take up too much space. And the included USB port on the charger is so convenient that it almost feels essential as it can be used to charge your phone or headphones even when you're not charging your device. Now, my device is maxed out in specs, which suits my personal use. However, for most people out there, lower tier specs such as a Core i5 processor or eight gigs of RAM should be more than fine for what you need to do. The short story is that the Surface Book is powerful. The Surface Book in my mind is the epitome of portable workstations. If you're looking to opt in for this computer, expect to get by with the lower specs. But if you know you're a power user or if you're just getting started in college, consult your tech specialist at your local bookstore to know what's best for you. 
Microsoft offers Office 365 for free for most educational institutions. Take advantage of that if you haven't already. Office and Surface make a seamless experience as Microsoft really fine tunes their products to let you focus on productivity. We'll save Office for another video, but I do have to highlight Microsoft OneNote. But before I can do that, I have to talk about the Surface's amazing versatility features. If you haven't heard already, the Surface can be used in one of four modes, laptop mode, tablet mode, studio mode, and view mode. I said earlier that the Surface Book can replace your notebooks and allow you to completely go digital, and this is why. You can type your notes or write them. You can surf the web with a trackpad or mouse, or you can tap and gesture through, watching videos, prop it up on a desk at a good angle, or just hold the tablet alone, which is much lighter while you relax. Portability here doesn't just mean you can carry it in your bag. Like most tablets, the Surface Book has a front-facing and rear-facing camera enabling you to take pictures of your classmates' notes, your professor's whiteboard, or projection. The front-facing camera has full HD capability and also doubles for Windows Hello facial recognition. I find this convenient for frequent use of my device, not needing to keep typing a password. One of my few gripes with this device, however, is that the camera's view of you must be near perpendicular to its line of sight. That means if you have the surface laying down on the table in studio or tablet mode, you most likely have to pick it up, rotate it, then unlock it. It doesn't seem too bad at first, but over time it gets annoying to the point where I might even opt to enter my pin on the screen instead of picking it up. Back to OneNote. Now, I took a Microsoft Office certification course back in 2011, part of which included learning about OneNote. At the time, I figured OneNote stays were numbered because it seemed completely useless because you could only type on the screen. Now that we have a touchscreen display and a Surface Pen, I was very wrong. Take a look at these notes that I've generated over time. With the Surface Pen and the book in studio or tablet mode, you have dozens of colors, accurate shapes, PDF printouts that you can write over, support for typing and math calculations, and even if you don't like all of that, just hit the record voice button and sit back. You can organize your class notes into folders too if you have different note-taking styles for different courses. I can't find anything bad to say in this department. I not only leave my charger back at home, but with this Surface Book, it's my PC and probably a couple sticks of gum in my backpack. I wanna to touch on IO a little bit before I wrap up here. The keyboard is pretty good. The keys aren't noisy like a MacBook and the keys have a nice travel distance. The two things I'm not a fan of are the design choice for the up and down arrow keys, which is very minuscule, but still quite evident. And the fact that Microsoft opted for keyboard brightness instead of screen brightness on the function keys. Aside from that, solid typing. The Surface Pen is a magnificent tool if you're the artistic type or even if you're not. Palm rejection allows you to literally rest your hand on the device as you're writing on it, which basically makes this synonymous to pen and paper. It's really nice once you get to try it out, especially when you're digitally inking as they call it in Microsoft OneNote or the Edge browser for as long as that's still around for. Uh, the pen also has some Nice functionality, you can program the eraser button for a short press, a double press, and a long press. Um, if I'm running late for a class or for a meeting and I need to start sketching some notes immediately, what I can do is I can open my laptop, unlock it with the facial recognition, click a button, and then OneNote instantly pops up and I can go ahead and get started. Or double click to open my calendar or click and hold for a screenshot of the display. There are two full-size USB ports and a mini display port. I've never felt like I needed more or that I was missing out. Granted, both my mouse and Surface Pen are Bluetooth, so I can always keep these ports open for storage devices. I also use Microsoft Wireless DisplayPort, which works fairly well with most Windows computers overall. And I also use a Surface Dial, which for me does an awesome job at speeding up video edits or adjusting my music while it's playing. And that's pretty much it. This device has allowed me to accomplish a lot more than I thought I could have as a student using a standard computer, if you will. It's a pricey investment indeed, but if you're anyone throughout your academic career who's using intensive software, if you're doing any sort of graphic design, photo editing, video editing, or even gaming on the side, this one's worth looking at. Thanks for watching. PC, signing off.